So, we go to the next presentation, which is on bronchoprovocation test. Um, bronchoprovocation test is mainly to identify airway hyperresponsiveness, which is uh, increased uh, sensitivity and exaggerated response to non allergic mm -hmm. stimuli. I'm out. Um, so it's used to uh, identify airway hyper responsiveness and also to assess uh, changes in hyper reactivity of airways and quantify severity in patients. Uh, the testing is done when uh, asthma is a possibility and uh, we have not been able to establish or eliminate the diagnosis and when we are considering uh, the, the, the role of an environmental or an occupational aid. So um, the allergic uh, stimulus comes as uh, a direct stimulus and a indirect stimulus. Direct stimulus is when it acts directly on a uh, affect a cell like a uh, airway smooth muscle cells or bronchial endothelial cells or mucus producing cells and uh, uh, an indirect stimuli acts through an intermediary cell like uh, inflammatory or neuronal cells and both in uh, uh, by effect causes air, air flow limitations. So various kinds of testing is used uh, like uh, methacholine challenge, uh, histamine challenge, uh, we have manifold challenge, exercise challenge tests, we'll be talking about each one of them. So uh, the first, uh, what we are going to discuss is the methacholine challenge test. Uh, methacholine is a synthetic cholinergic uh, agent which stimulates the N3 receptors in the uh, airways. And uh, this test is very highly specific for airway hyperresponsiveness. So the effect is mediated through these M3 receptors based on the molecules going and binding on the receptors. Uh, the, the inhalation is uh, basically performed by stepwise increments of uh, five breath inhalations and a positive test is uh, uh, said to be uh, there when we have 20% decrease in MPV1. That is, uh, and the concentration which achieves that is called as the provocative concentration. Now, uh, because of the various uh, ways of delivering methacholine, they have started talking in terms of a provocative dose because uh, they fee, uh, the studies uh, fee in the, uh, the conclusions of various studies collected uh, the, the imply that a provocative dosing is a better measure because this is acting by direct action on the receptors. So uh, the baseline FPV1 that uh, uh, should be there before we proceed with the metabolic challenge test should be normal or at least more than 60 to 70 percent predicted. Uh, it should also be kept in mind that uh, infections, upper and lower respiratory tract infections can alter test results by increasing airway hyperresponsiveness. So what are the contraindications to doing a methacholine challenge test? So the absolute contraindications would be a recent MI or a stroke in the last three months, uh, known or suspected aortic aneurysm, uncontrolled hypertension and uh, FEV1 less than 50% predicted uh, that is a uh, value of around 1 liter. And the relative contraindications would be pregnancy, nursing, uh, use of coldness based inhibitors such like uh, 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 drugs which are used for Alzheimer's like Donofacil, Galantamine. Uh, also we know that uh, OP, OP agents also cause uh, coldness rates in nutrition. And all the stigmins that are used, peridose stigmins, all that with and hydroponic. Uh, so uh, the relative contraindication at the one value will be less than 60% or less than 1.5 liters. Also, if there are any physical or mental handicaps which affects the proper conduct of a test, is a relative contraindication to performing it. So when we're doing these tests, uh, most of our patients, uh, if they are on uh, in treatment from outside, how long we should withhold these drugs before uh, performing the test? So uh, if uh, patients are on SABAs, it should be withheld for eight hours. LABAs are on two days. Lamas for 24 hours and the, the antihistamines for up to 96 hours. 
so theophylline standard uh, preparations can, can be withheld for one day and uh, if it's a sustained release uh, theophylline for 48 hours leukotriene modifiers for uh, one day uh, uh, in the uh, document which is published uh, in uh, 1999 uh, by the ATS, uh, they have said that uh, on a stable dose of corticosteroid, it can be conducted, but we should keep in mind that this could influence the AHR. Uh, caffeine containing uh, drinks should be withheld for six hours, and uh, if the patients are on beta blockers, that may also increase the airway hyperresponsiveness. So the methods used to uh, perform a metabolic challenge test is uh, five breath uh, dosimeter method and a two minute tidal breathing method. So uh, these uh, methods have been standardized and uh, the, the end conclusion is like the dosimeter method is able to deliver a, a, a fixed dose to the airway and that can be quantified better than a two minute tidal breathing method. So, uh, in the, uh, the, what are the specifications that are given for this is that uh, standardized driving pressure of around 20 pounds per square inch and uh, activation time of this documenter to uh, 0.5 to 0.8 seconds will deliver a fixed volume of aerosol. And uh, this, uh, the dosimeter is connected to a nebulizer which uh, generates an aerosol which should be less than 5 microns uh, in the diameter. So if it's more than five microns, it will just get deposited in the posterior pharyngeal wall, not the correct dosing, which is causing HR will be a uh, little uh, uh, spurious uh, kind of value. So if it's between one to four, it has a better deposition in the medium and small airways, and uh, we'll be able to correlate it much better. The nebulizer out, uh, output for a tidal breathing method should be around 0.13 ml per minute and for dosimeter method is 0.009 ml for each 0.6 second actuation. So uh, the delivery of this method problem is uh, either by a quadrupling schedule or by a doubling schedule. So uh, we are in increments, we try to achieve the maximum uh, uh, concentration that's on 16 uh, milligram per milliliter. So this is the algorithm which is uh, uh, published in a recent uh, document by the uh, European Respiratory Society. And this, uh, uh, so the testing sequence is as follows. So first we perform a baseline spirometry. So if we have an epigone of more than 60%, predicted then we administer the initial uh, diluent which is uh, usually a normal saline solution uh, and uh, we measure the uh, we perform a, a spirometry after uh, a delay and we see if there is a fev1 decline of more than uh, 20% if if it is more than 20% we uh, just record the signs and symptoms and uh, wait for uh, give uh, bronchodilator wait for 10 minutes and perform a spirometry to see if there is reversal but if it is less than 20 percent we uh, go on to challenge with metabolism so uh, we administer the next dose of metabolism and perform the spirometry uh, after the delay and uh, we are waiting uh, we will stepwise increment the dose till uh, everyone decline of more than 20 percent is seen so uh, the dose which corresponds to a concentration of 16 milligram per ml is uh, 400 micrograms of methacodone. And uh, finally, if there is a FE1 decline after that of more than 10%, uh, the study is completed and we record it as the, do, uh, the airway, uh, the bron uh, bronco constriction was seen at the maximum dose. Time. So uh, the method is, uh, we are delivering this methacholine and uh, then uh, asking the patient to, uh, uh, by tidal breathing, we ask them to take the breaths in uh, over at least, uh, oh, the ins inspiration should be at least around six seconds and uh, breath should be held at uh, total lung capacity for around six seconds. And this inhalation is over two minutes. So uh, we do it as five breaths, like I mentioned, and spirometry is repeated at 30 seconds and 90 seconds after the last inhalation of a dose. So uh, if, and, uh, and uh, the so, uh, bronchodilator is administered after uh, 
doing the spirometry and spi uh, following the challenge and then spirometry is repeated after the bronchodilator after a 10 minute uh, delay. Uh, so when we have a FE1 uh, decrease less than 20% after dilute or first dose, so doc, uh, the test result is documented as uh, provocative concentration 20 is less than the lowest uh, concentration which is administered. And if it does not decrease by more than 20% after the highest dose, it is uh, documented as PC20 more than uh, 16 milligram per ml. So this is the interpretation, this is the, the table which is taken from the ATS uh, guidelines for methacholine challenge test published in 1999. So uh, how they classified bronchial responsiveness was uh, normal bronchial responsiveness, borderline, mild and moderate to severe. So uh, the normal is when you have more than 16, that is you have given the highest dose of methacholine challenge test. And uh, then seeing that there is no respon uh, response or less, less uh, more than 10% uh, response. 4 to 6 is uh, 16 is borderline. 1 to 4 uh, milligram per ml is uh, mild bronch uh, bronchial hyperresponsiveness, and less than 1 is moderate to severe. So this uh, state, uh, this is the one published in ERS. So what they have done here is they have corresponded it to the provocative dose as well. So, uh, like I said, 16 corresponds to 400 micrograms of methacholine. And further, what uh, they have supplies classified is the moderate to severe as separate, moderate and mild. So, uh, less than 1 to 0.25 will become moderate, and less than 0.25 will be marked heavy hyperresponse. Now, going over to methacholine challenge. So, uh, methacholine challenge is a hypertonic uh, stimulus uh, which increases the airway osmolarity and this triggers inflammatory mediators from uh, release from the mast cells and muscle. So, uh, the, for this test, you need to have uh, FPV1 of at least 60%. And the delivery it basically comes as a capsule. So, it's delivered as a dry powder inhaler. The uh, contraindication to this test would be uh, known hypersensitivity and uh, to either manitol or to the capsule gelatin. And uh, the maximum uh, cumulative dose that can be delivered is uh, 635 mg. And the uh, common adverse reactions that can be expected are head headache, uh, throat irritation, nausea, chest discomfort, and wheezing. So uh, when we are performing a bronchoprovocation test, it's uh, Mandatory that uh, we have all the necessary medications and the personnel who is trained to handle a uh, person who goes into severe bronch uh, bronchopulsion. The next is a uh, histamine challenge test. So here in this, we are using aerosolized histamine phosphate and the peak action occurs within 30, 30 seconds to 2 minutes and the maximum dose that can be given is uh, 10 milligram per hour. The spirometry is performed immediately and then repeated at 3 minutes. The recovery in this, sorry, is quicker than with uh, manitol with less cumulative action. The side effects ex as expected from this test is uh, a flushing or a headache. So, see. Now, uh, exercise challenge test is used to detect uh, AHR in people who are free of bronchoconstriction at uh, rest. So this can be performed by using a treadmill or a cycle ergometer. So what happens is the heat loss, the heat and water uh, loss from the airways that alters the osmolarity there and again causes airway hyperresponsiveness, which is uh, which is termed as uh, exercise induced bronchospasm. So before offering this test, we should have a history which is suggestive of uh, similar complaints while performing uh, exercise. The patient is having symptoms. Uh, uh, and the resting ECG should be done to know that at baseline does not have any cardiac and, uh, abnormalities which can be worsened while performing the test. FEV1 should not be less than 65% for proceeding with this test and the exercise should be vigorous enough to elicit work rates of 80 to 90% of the predicted heart rate for a period of 6 to 8 minutes. Uh, the decrease of 10% uh, from pre-exercise FEV1 is considered uh, as positive airway hyperresponsiveness. Uh, a drop of more than 15% would be considered as more significant. Uh, the confidence of that diagnosis is much more with more than 15% drop. 
So post um, exercise, FTC manuals are performed at five minute intervals for 30 minutes. And a, a false positive result can be obtained in patients who have a vocal cord dysfunction or a abnormal posterior arachnoid motion. So uh, the um, instruction that has been given is that the patient should avoid the vigorous exercise for four hours prior to testing. Coming up to the last uh, uh, type of testing, that is uh, eucapnic voluntary hyperventilation. So in this, uh, the, uh, the bags are filled or the air is delivered as a gaseous mixture of 5% carbon dioxide, 21% of oxygen and 75% of nitrogen. Uh, the reason why we are giving this carbon dioxide is to prevent respiratory alkalosis. So it allows high levels of ventilation without uh, much change in the uh, pH. That is, uh, the uh, FEV1 that is required for this testing is more than 65-70% or uh, 1.5 liter. So there are basically three methods how it is done. So first two methods involves patient breathing cold air and the third method is patient uh, uh, breathing air at ambient temperature. So in the first method, the patient breathes at a fraction of the maximum voluntary ventilation, 30 to 70% of the maximum voluntary ventilation, and maintains this level of ventilation for four to six minutes. Uh, spiral is repeated at fixed intervals after the hyperventilation at one, five, and 10 minutes. In the second method, uh, patient breathes cold air at increasing levels of ventilation up to the maximum voluntary ventilation. That uh, at uh, flow rates of 7.5, 15, 30, and 60 liter. In the uh, in the third method, uh, we saw the picture of the large bal balloon. Uh, so the patient breathes from that. Uh, it's 5.5 liter uh, balloon and uh, breathes via non rhythmic wall uh, with a large boat tube. The gas is delivered in this test at around 30 times of the patient's FAV. So uh, spirometry is done immediately after hyperventilation and then at 5 minutes. A decrease of 15% is uh, consistent with some degree of airway hyperreactivity. To summarize, uh, BPT can be done with uh, various techniques. So the most common is the methacolin challenge. Uh, Manitol test is an indirect test which is uh, also standardized and quite easy to use but only just using a DPA and then doing spiral. Exercise testing is uh, typically used to evaluate exercise induced uh, bronchospasm and eucapnic hyper uh, voluntary hyperventilation can be used without risk of uh, respiratory activity. Thank you.